there are many religions. And there are many religions, um, which each of which contributes in various ways, answers to the important questions and answers to the ultimate questions. How do we sort out then what is true and what is a departure from truth as we look at a world of many religions? Uh, how do we approach that question? That's, that's, that's the question which, which we want to struggle with in our next session. But for right now, I'd like, to, um, I'd like to simply notice that these religions, <clears throat> that religious systems and cultural systems are organized like an onion. And the center of the, of the onion is the world view. That's at the center of the onion, the world view, which is how I interpret those three ultimate questions. The answers I give to those three ultimate questions are the world view. There are some other dimensions to world view as well, but those are the, those, those are the, the, uh, the dimensions of world view we will be working with in this class. What, what is the meaning of the universe? And what is my place in the universe? Those questions are worldview questions, which are at the very center of the culture. We call this in English the culture core, the core of the culture. Then around that worldview, we find the power, the power system, which we just talked about a bit ago, the system of power. That's, around, that's the next layer in our, in our cultural onion. Around that is another layer, which we, which we refer to as the values. the values of a culture. At the next layer, we have the practices of a culture. The practices. And then at the outer layer, We have things, things that we make, like this chalk is a thing that was made. So at the outer layer, then, you have the things that we make. And so cultures are formed with these different layers, worldview at the center, and that is where religion and philosophy and ideology reside, right there at the worldview center. This is the realm where religions hold forth. And that worldview informs our understandings of power. Our understandings of power are communicated to us by the worldview. At the next layer is the value system of the culture. And that is formed by our understandings of power. When you understand power, that will form what your values become, what is most important to you. And then at the next layer are the practices, the practices of a culture. And then at the very end are the things that a culture makes. That's in the outside. That is the outside layer, and it's at that layer that you can have change taking place more readily than here in the worldview center. The worldview center is very, very resistant to change. <clears throat> That's how cultures are formed. As I said, the religious beliefs and practices and functions 
are within the Worldview Center. Now you all look at me, what in the world are you talking about? Okay, let me, let me use, uh, let me use uh, Africa where I grew up as an example of what I'm talking about. When I lived among the Zanaki of Tanzania, this is how a family homestead was constructed. You had a fence made out of thorns surrounding the family homestead. It was cactus thorns. When the wind would blow, the cactus needles would actually float in the wind and could sometimes penetrate you if you're walking past one of, one of these hedges. Every homestead had this cactus hedge around the homestead. Why? Why would they do that? That's the artifact, that's the thing that they lived in. What was their worldview that would have led them to put that kind of fence around their house? Ah, it was certainly to keep out the hyenas and the leopards, to be sure, but there was much more to it than that. They believed that at night, spirits, that are sometimes quite angry would walk around and do you damage. So these cactus hedges, which were such dangerous things if you would ever get against them, would keep the spirits outside, you see. Just as I could not penetrate the cactus hedge because it was too thorny, the spirits also were kept away from the homestead. So it was an attempt to protect the homestead from spirits or from witches. Oh, yo, yo. At night, the witches would prowl around and you don't want a witch to get in the house and put a curse on you while you're sleeping. And so this hedge would keep out the witches as well. So that was, that was the outside of the homestead. And that we can understand quite well, putting a fence around the homestead to keep out evil powers that might hurt you, might seek to do you harm, okay? Something else about the homestead was very interesting. Each house, each house in the homestead was built like, I'm looking from the top down, okay? So each house was round like that and had a nice thatched roof on it. But there wasn't just one house in the homestead. There was often three or four houses in the family homestead. So you have several houses in the family homestead, not just one. Now why would there be several houses in the family homestead? Why not, I live in a house which stands by itself. There's not other houses linked to my house. They're in the USA, just as you do. But here in this African situation, every family homestead had several houses. Why? Ah, I'll tell you why. It's because a wife lived at each house. Could you imagine two wives living in one house together? No, impossible. Impossible. And so the man, the husband, would build a house, a nice round house for each wife that he had. And so on Tuesday night, he would be with this wife, on Wednesday night with this wife, on Thursday night with this wife, on Friday night from this wife, he was always a visitor going from the home of, of, of wife to wife, going to her homestead, you see. That's why they put it together this way. And so when you would look at the artifact in which they lived, you would see these multiple houses 
And the reason there was multiple houses was because the man wanted to have several wives. Now, a wife was very costly. A wife might cost 20 cows. So if you have four wives, that's at least 80 cows, maybe 100 cows that you paid for all those women. Very costly. And furthermore, wives are always fighting with each other. And so you don't have peace in your homestead. So what do you think was the value that made a man want to have so many wives when they make so much trouble for him and they're so costly? What's behind it? Even a small contribution can make a big difference. Jesus fed 5,000 people because of a little boy's five loaves. Regardless of the amount, your contribution is very important and greatly appreciated. Visit us at tvsseminary.com. Well, it's the notion that children give you salvation. They believed that God went away and he will never return again. And so when you die, you will go into oblivion. That's the worst catastrophe you could possibly imagine. And so the man needs to have many wives who will give him many children so that he will have a great salvation in the next life by being remembered by his children because his wife, his, 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 because uh, God will not remember him. So you need children to remember him. So at the Worldview Center is the conviction that you need multiple children in order to get to heaven because God has gone away. Therefore, children give you power. God doesn't give you power, but children give you power in the next life by remembering you. And so if you want to be a powerful man in the next life, you must have many children so that they will remember you. Every evening when they sit down for their meal, they will pour beer on the ground and they will put some food on the ground saying, oh, grandpa who died back there 40 years ago, come and eat with us, you see. And all his children and his children's children do that. And so he has a powerful life in the next existence. His spirit is powerful as it walks the land, you see. But it is powerless if he has no children. If he has no children, his spirit has no power whatsoever and goes into oblivion. That's the worldview. That's the worldview, you see. And so to have power, you need many children. Therefore, the value is as many children as possible. And the practice then becomes polygamy. Multiple wives, as many wives as possible, so that you will have as many children as possible. So that's, that's the worldview, which in turn forms your understandings of power and of values and of practices and the things, ultimately, that you live in, like this thing that we live in. I don't live in this kind of a thing because I don't have that kind of a worldview system, you see. And at the heart of it all is what we refer to as religion. You know, it is the notion of ancestors, ancestral spirits, uh, what is true power, the role of children in the next life, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, you know, every aspect of life is formed by this worldview understanding.